Hello there. This is Dennis James. Welcome to Ensuring Your Well-Being. We're going to have a amazing conversation with Valerie Penns, who is the guru of health and nutrition. I've known Valerie quite a while, and um, she walks her talk, so uh, it's going to be exciting. So how you doing, Valerie? Oh, thank you, Dennis. That was such a nice introduction. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, so, you know, let's get right to it. You know, let's talk a, a little bit, you know, uh, about who you are and how you got into um, nutrition and really bringing, you know, awareness to people, no matter what age they are, how they need to take charge of what they put in your, their mouth. Sure. Yeah. So um, I started my practice uh, about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, actually didn't originally go to school for nutrition. I went back to school kind of as a uh, it's a second career, um, and now it's my full-time practice. So um, I've been enjoying that for about 10 years now. Okay, yeah. So what motivates you to, 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 to do it? Um, probably anything that motivates a, a parent, and that is the health and well-being of your child. So um, while I was... I suppose, fascinated by the concept of nutrition in my younger days. It wasn't until I became a parent and both of my kids were in need of additional care outside of the traditional medical system. Mm -hmm. There were some gaps in the treatment. Um, we certainly were not seeing the results that we felt like we wanted to see. And they both children at a very young age had multiple concerns and that led me to seek out additional means of care. And so I went into this originally just for the benefit of my own children um, and then led me to the practice I have today. Right. And so uh, also I know you've done, you know, just being in Lake Orion in the community and being connected like that, and I've known you for sure 10 years, and I know you have a really good insurance agent too. Uh, <laughs> I think that, uh, what's his name? <laughs> I, he dances, he bikes. Oh. I, I, maybe you've seen him around town. Oh, yeah, that bike and dance insurance That man. guy, yeah, I've, he's great. I've heard of him. And you know what's exciting is I know you also have a book that um, is really my wife, Sue, has utilized that a lot. So you want to talk a little bit about that book and kind of the depth and the meaning, why you wrote that book and, um, you know, just some of the, and, and then eventually you could also mention how people could get a hold of it. And then we're going to, we're going to move. Yeah, forward. absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, in the early years of my practice, I, I continuously heard the same type of, I'll say complaints in regards to healthy eating is too complicated. Healthy eating is too expensive. Healthy eating doesn't taste good. Right. So I started writing recipes just individually for clients mm -hmm. to debunk those three concerns. It doesn't need to be expensive. It doesn't need to be complicated and it should taste incredible. So all of the, the recipes I was designing was out of that desire to meet those three things, those three standards. It should be affordable. It should be simple. It should taste sure. delicious. Mm -hmm. Then someone proposed, you know, you should really teach this in a class style setting. And I was like, okay, uh, yeah. I have to find a spot to do that, but then I will do that. And the cooking classes were a great success. And it was from those classes that the guests said, you need to put all of these in a book. <laughs> <laughs> to which I said, "Sure, okay, I will learn how to do that as well. Um, took a few uh, writing courses and went to um, some seminars in regards to, you know, how, how do you put together a book, yeah. what that looks like. Yeah. Um, and so I was able to publish the first book at the very end of 2019, which is a great time to try to set up a book tour for 2020. Um, so that was interesting. But essentially, the book is, I will say this, it's, it's not a diet book. Right. So although when the body is functioning optimally, yeah. you will organically drop excess weight. 
but it's not a get trim quick book. Right. That's it's really it's it's anti-inflammatory. It's high antioxidant. It's yeah. high for disease prevention, optimal body function. But it is not for the professional chef. <laughs> it is for the amateur home chef. I always let people know I did not go to culinary school. I went to school for nutrition. Those are very different uh, studies. Well, I think you have a chef in your family, don't you? His uh, name's Brian. Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> if he is, that's news to me. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. All right, I, I can just go based off what I know of him. <laughs> well, he certainly loves food. So that's the makings of any great chef is that they love food. There so you go. <laughs> we have that in common. All right. Yep. So what's the name of your book? So this book, which is hopefully the first of a series of three, but this book is called uh, Deliciously Holistic. It's Inspired Favorites. So essentially the recipes are made up from people that I have encountered or experiences that I've had in my life that yeah. inspired me to write a recipe or rewrite a recipe. So some yeah. of them are favorites from my childhood that needed yeah. a nutritional upgrade. And so I rewrote recipes that I maybe enjoyed as a kid. Um, but like I said, just needed a few tweaks uh, yeah. to be kind of worthy of the Holistic Health by Valerie branding, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Anti-inflammatory, high antioxidant. Yeah, which is a big deal. I mean, you know, just the, we know that chronic is such a major deal. Chronic inflammation, sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, and everybody's going to you know, uh, what they put in their mouth. And I can even relate a little bit to it, right? I mean, uh, being the young Jay Bird I am, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, – and, uh, everything I do within my life with the physical side of it. And I just understand how important nutrition is. And why, whenever I watch what I put in my mouth, and Sue is really good at making sure that we eat healthy all the time. And that's a blessing behind that. You know, she's the new sourdough queen. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think we all experience it. It's, it. it's understanding, though, what you put in your mouth and what you don't. Right. And then creating a habit of creating that lifestyle to yeah. change yeah. that. And that inflammation can be eliminated. Well, significantly reduced for sure. Reduced. I mean, uh, eliminate is probably the, the elimination would be difficult because yeah. inflammation's there as a signaling system. So we actually want the inflammatory response because it signals to us that attention must be paid to that area. Sure. Right. So it's, yeah. if you burned yourself, you yeah. would want the inflammatory response to know that you burned yourself yeah. <laughs> so that you could take care of the wound. Right. right. But certainly significantly reduced from a chronic perspective yeah. versus just an acute inflammatory response. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, the advantage of working with a nutritionist therapist, and you are also yes. a, a, a therapist, Yes, nutritional therapist. <laughs> Probably more Correct. than one way, but can, can a person just Google? <laughs> tell, well, tell me about that first, you know, the oh, nutritional sure. therapist side sure, of it. Sure, sure. Um, and the question, right, why doesn't someone just Google nutrition? Right, you got You it. know, um, <clears throat> probably a, a, the best answer I can come up with to that right now would be, I, I appreciate Google. I like Google. Google is something I would use when I need directions to go somewhere, right? And if you think about that, if we say, okay, I need to go from this point to that point, mm -hmm. and, you, and you put in where you, need to, where you are now to where you need to get to, and Google or Apple Maps will spit out directions for you. Now, here's what's missing, and they have upgraded. So, you know, I don't want to bash Google or Apple Maps. They have upgraded. They will ask you, are you driving? Are you walking? Are you on your bicycle? Okay. But what yeah. they don't have is, are you on roller skates? Are you using snowshoes? Are you wearing track shoes? Are you barefoot? Are you using crutches? Right. right? So there's not yeah. enough information to actually get you from point A to right. point B. Right. And I nutrition works the same way. Okay. I have never found any two clients in my 10 years that responded to the yeah. same type of nutritional care as someone else. And they're certainly not coming from the same place. And they're certainly not, um, they don't have identical lifestyle factors or lifestyle circumstances. So individualized care is something that I feel very strongly about. And while there are incredible books that have been written, sure. um, 
on nutrition, on yeah. wellness, yeah. changing your lifestyle. Yeah. The individual care of a nutritional therapist is something that is very important um, because although the body functions very similar, <laughs> everyone's body functions quite similarly, we're so unique just from our DNA to our lifestyle and our circumstances. So I think everybody should be treated individually. And sure. that's how I've developed my practice. Yeah, I, I like that. That And that is true, right? Because um, we are unique and different in that way. Right. And, um, y- you know, and I, I recall you at one time where, you, you know, as you were, it's interesting, because you would go in and you'd clean out refrigerators for people. <laughs> Right. And back, I, back I, in the day. Yes. I, I don't do that anymore. Okay. But yes, originally I did. But it's a good point because what I think about when I buy something, it can be really healthy. I mean, if that's in the refrigerator or it's, uh, you know, it's the, the great almonds and some cashews and some fruits in there. Right. All that's right. Great. I eat the whole bag. Right. <laughs> so then I got to be doing sit ups and going out and riding an extra 10 mile bike. ten mile. So. Yeah. Sure. It, well, yeah. So now I, it is important that people are reading their labels. And so while right. I'm not in their home right. clearing it out and physically pointing out, okay, so mm-hmm. I want you to take a look at the grams of protein versus the grams of sugar that are added in this, right. right? I am teaching them ways that they are doing that for themselves in their home. It's really important to read labels to have a clear understanding yeah. of what it is that you yeah. are consuming. So most people don't know how to read labels, so they have to... I would say, you know, it's not something we learn in school. So if someone does know how to read a label, it's because they sought out that information. I can do that. I've gotten a lot better. Got right? better at reading labels. Good. Yeah. Well, healthy so life. Healthy. You know, vitality. I, I'm not going to even talk, but, you know, that's a John Hancock with uh, that talks about all that, right? Nutrition and that. So that helped me. But, it, you know, it's kind of cool how and they got the Yuku app. I don't know if you've seen that. You know, and it'll make you put down things you normally want to take with you. <laughs> well, that's good. Any any resources or support are certainly helpful. That right. makes a huge difference. And that's probably something that's very different about my practice versus mm-hmm. um, another practitioner in nutrition might do is I really believe in additional support and resources versus here's the list of things you don't eat and I do want you to eat. Go. Right. For me, I, I haven't seen great success with folks that respond to that type of instruction. Mm-hmm. It takes a whole lot more education and a lot more time and care for a true lifestyle change. Yeah. Again, that that yeah. to me is not super helpful. That's the same as Googling what's healthy and what's not healthy. Right. So taking all different ages, right? And I For sure. You know, some of this, you know, this podcast is for everyone. Right, because I think of you know nutrition; it should be for everyone, you know. Now we all eat, so. But yes. I have a, a, a certain market, you know. It just depends, but uh, geared with seniors. Sure. You know, and so what's your thoughts when it comes to you know somebody being uh, older, fifty plus, or what you know that type of thing, 60, 70, 80, whatever. Sure. Well, you know, it's very different. You said someone. So that someone, it's very different if you're male or you're female. So uh, the menopausal transition. Oh, I've heard of it. You've heard of it. Oh, I'm so grateful that you've heard of it. Um, It's it's a quite unique experience that unfortunately men will not get to experience. They watch a very slight and gradual decline of testosterone versus women see this exceptionally dramatic, massive drop in estrogen. And estrogen plays a role in so much of our bodies. It is not just the thing that we need to get pregnant and carry a baby to term. Um, Estrogen is highly anti-inflammatory. It does Mm -hmm. so much for our brains and our bodies. So Mm -hmm. When we're talking about 50 plus, it really does make a difference if you're talking about a male or a female. So again, individualized care. Right. Just right back to all that. Right. Not putting everybody because, yeah, in one box, so to say. Yes. Certainly can't. Also, you know, I know you, 
are all about individual, but I know that you've also spent some time uh, working within businesses. Could be a small business or a large business, right? And I, you know, just me being around the the group employee side of things, the work site benefits how important, and they'll bring in people, you know, that are professionals like you to help them and hopefully clean out their vending machines. I, <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know, or whatever that's worth. Um, so tell me a little bit about that, what you've done with that and what kind of success you've had with that. Sure. So, you know, I'm so encouraged by the direction that uh, companies or corporations are taking in regards mm-hmm. to the just that whole area of health and well-being. Yeah. So I, I'm a Gen Xer, so we come from the idea of, push, 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 more, 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 produce, 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 like don't sleep, just work, just make it happen, right? And I'm so grateful for the generations that are following us because they have a much better understanding that uh, rest matters, recovery matters, right? right? Um, It's wonderful because when I get the opportunity to work with a company, Everyone is a little happier. And statistically speaking, happy, healthy employees produce a much better outcome. Yeah, more they're, they're more, they're, yes, the productivity goes up. Yeah. Just the morale around the office goes up. It's a much more pleasant place to work. So I'm just very encouraged that our companies are going in this direction. So I've really enjoyed being able to step into a, um, you know, corporate environment or even, a, you know, a smaller company and, being able to make positive changes so that the boss is happy with uh, the changes that he's seeing within the employees, but really the employees are happier and they're more than happy to come to work sure. because they f- they feel cared for and they feel right. like their their lives matter and they can have some balance. Right. Now, is there a certain, uh, like, is that done, like, you know, I guess it depends on budget for that company and how much time they want to invest into sure. all that. Sure, sure. Yep. So it's interesting to design a wellness program for a company um, is certainly unique. Yep. Based on how many employees they have, um, certainly a budget. The wonderful thing is most often if a company um, implements a wellness program, they will receive a discount on their um, healthcare expenses, right? Because they can Ah. prove that they offer a wellness, some type of wellness program or wellness benefit to Mm. the employees. So for some companies, I may go in twice a year and do a big, you know, half day seminar. For some, I'm there once a month and it's like an hour at lunchtime, hour and a half. And it's many presentations on various topics. For some of them, I get to see them one on one and I'm giving them individualized care for every employee. And it's part of their wellness benefit that they've set up. Mm -hmm. So there are varying degrees in regards to, um, you know, kind of what my role is in, in a company or a corporation. But, uh, again, that's, it is individualized. There's different packages that companies can sign up for. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. You know, it is all about companies being focused. Yeah. But it, ta- it usually comes from the owner or. Yeah. It comes from the top down. The, the top down. Yeah. HR has got to buy into it. For sure. Right. And, um, then they'll reap the benefits. And it's not an overnight thing. We know that, right? Just like anything else we do in life, right? It, it takes a commitment and time and change and uh, that. You're the resource to say, this is what you need to do. Now, it's your, you know, it's up to you, right? Yeah, and, it's, it's pretty incredible to see just a change that can happen in a business environment just by changing a few small things. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really wonderful to see. Because you just bring a little more joy into the environment and into right. that time people spend at work. Right. So, so the, incredible. you know, how is it different from what you do with individuals then? I don't know. You're talking to groups. Yeah, yeah. So with <clears throat> individuals, um, so certainly when I go in for like a lunch and learn style, I, I haven't reviewed, reviewed everyone's blood work. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't had an intake session. I haven't, right? So one-on-one looks entirely different. So when I first start working with a client, the first appointment is their intake session. So they're loading all their previous lab work so I can review all of that. 
Um, they have to fill out a questionnaire so I can see what it is they're struggling with, any previous diagnosis they have, um, what their major concerns are, what the family history is. So the intake is much more in-depth. A lot of time, yeah. many hours are spent kind of looking through all of that and then de- creating a um, nutritional care plan and what, what that is moving forward. Right. So that's right. how you do it. Much more involved when it's one-on-one. Sure. Yeah. And so on the company side, you're not really doing that or what? So some companies do choose that as an option in regards to me working one-on-one with each employee. And in that situation, they have a much bigger benefits package. So each employee would get a certain amount of visits with me, and it would be that exact setup where I'm working one-on-one like that versus a group setting where there would be a presentation topic, and then they can follow up with, you know, Q and A within that time frame. Um, although of course I always let people email me after the fact, but if they have a very specific or in-depth question that would be unique to them at that point, I would let them know you need to be an individual client because I can't answer this question without having seen your blood work or know your medications or so on. All right. So it's all about living a healthy lifestyle. You know, <laughs> I hope um, so. <laughs> you know, so, you know, What's a few tips to give them to live a healthy lifestyle? And how long does that normally take? Uh, you to know, switch from an unhealthy lifestyle to a healthy lifestyle? Man, it's a lifelong journey. It is that's, a lifelong journey. That's, that's always, yeah, you right? Mean that all, yeah, right. And, you know, the cool thing, though, is you can always get back on the wagon and, and start making it happen again, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, every day is new. So talk, talk you know, just, you know, for, for from a professional in in your business that lives that lifestyle and talks about that, um, tell me about that. How the the audience what they need to hear. Sure, a few a few tips. Okay, so I would say before you even start making a change, I would be realistic with yourself and ask yourself a few tough questions. The first question would be, um, what do I hope to change? What am I uncomfortable with? Right. Yeah. So it might be a really easy answer saying, well, my doctor told me I'm pre-diabetic or my doctor told me I have metabolic syndrome or, you know, whatever the case may be. So just being honest with maybe what's uncomfortable in the body, why do you need to make a change, right? So you understand you have a, a why. There has to be a why. The second question would be, what am I willing to do and what am I not willing to do? Mm. Because most often people are like, I'm willing to do anything. Yeah, And then... <laughs> When we lay out the plan of care, they're like, well, I'm not willing to do that. And I'm not willing to do Mm. that. It's like, okay, so let's start with what are you willing to do and what are you not willing to do? And sometimes it's just circumstantially, right? So based on um, what their life is set up now, how many hours of the day are they spent not working or not taking care of children or taking care of an elderly parent or, right? So we have to be realistic about where is the pockets of time that you have for change? Because everybody hits January 1st and they're like, my whole life's exactly. going to be different. And it's like, let's be realistic right. about what you can do, right. what's reasonable for your current circumstances, and what you're just unwilling to do at this time. It might change six months down the road and now they're willing to do something else or additional a year down the road, two years down the road, whatever. But just starting by saying, what's my why? What am I dealing with? What am I uncomfortable with? What am I struggling with? And what am I actually willing to do? Um, From there, statistically knowing that more positive change comes from very small changes consistently versus major changes inconsistently. So just knowing that a few small things will make a huge difference if and when you can be consistent. So setting up your non-negotiables. Right. So if a a non-negotiable, again, might look different from season to season or circumstance to circumstance based on what's going in your life. But some might be non-negotiables. The non-negotiable might be I'm not willing to drive through McDonald's to get my breakfast. I'm not willing to have a donut for breakfast. I'm not whatever the non-negotiable is. And then you have to set yourself up for success. So if I previously was going through McDonald's to get myself an egg McMuffin and that was my routine every morning. I can't just replace it with nothing, right? I can't say, okay, I'm no longer going to do that. I'm just done. And you just drive past McDonald's and you're starving. 
you need to edit and replace that, right? So setting yourself up for success would be putting in the necessary support or the necessary tools. So since I'm not going to McDonald's for my breakfast anymore, right. here's what I've set up instead as my alternate plan versus I don't get to have that anymore, so I guess I'm going to be starving, right? That's not setting yourself up for success. So that would be the first thing is figure out what your non-negotiables are, just a few things. Right. And then get the support instead of the McDonald's. Uh, it could be wherever that healthy location is, or maybe you t- brought it with you. Right. Maybe you made a smoothie the night before, yeah. before you cleaned up dinner and you were like, hey, I'm going to make my smoothie that I'm going to have as my breakfast and I'll drink that on the way in. Right. There's a, a smoothie recipe in my cookbook. <laughs> so um, just make sure if it is functioning as your breakfast, you got a decent amount of protein in there. Right. Yeah. To, to keep you full, keep you happy. Um, right. But so, just setting yourself so up. So once somebody makes that change, right, normally change will come when you know, unfortunately, when, oh, man, I, you know, I'm, I have high blood pressure now and my blood cholesterol is uh, off the limits. And, um, you know, I'm, I just had a heart attack right. or I'm, I have cancer, whatever, right? So usually those are the fears that hope, you know, unfortunately to motivate people, but it's never too late to get on board and maybe it is that it is, but I believe anything's better than at least trying. Right. So as long as you're breathing, it's not too late. There you go. Right. So as, I like as, that. as long as you're breathing, it's definitely not too late. Yeah. Uh, changes, positive changes can be made. Yeah. Um, it's true. It is more our generation. Again, the generations that have come after us, they typically don't wait until, you know, they're seeking out education. They, they want to feel better. They want, right. right? They want to feel their best. Right. Uh, but certainly uh, Gen X and older, <laughs> yeah. we we wait until the last minute, right? So um, I, I once heard uh, someone say that the worst time to dig a well is when you're thirsty. <laughs> so you, you don't want to start digging that well when it's going to take a whole long time and you're already dying of thirst, sure. right? So certainly making small changes today yeah is a step in the right direction. And speaking of a well, water is a great place to start. If you're not already a person who's drinking water, start your day. Put water in front of the coffee maker so that you're drinking water as the coffee is brewing. That's probably a good place to start. Yeah. Yeah. They talk a lot about how much water you should intake you. I mean, it's creating habit. I know I carry one everywhere I go and it's really been helpful. You know, and, and it's been probably five years since I got off, at least five years, where I was a little bit into the Diet Coke. I think thought I was doing myself a favor, right? It wasn't real Coke. It was Diet Coke. Oh, yeah. sure. Yes. And what I realized is that was poison just like everything else. That's you know? correct. My whole family was drinking water, but Dennis James, it's like, okay, <laughs> I came on board and I don't. And and it's cool now, right? Because even feel better with it and all that. Uh, you know, just real real quickly, I just want your in, input. You know, this is off the cuff, but okay. intermittent fasting. Sure. Right now, I Dennis James do it, and it works for me. And there's so many people that do it different ways. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? So, uh, painting with a broad brush. So, generally <clears throat> speaking if you are trying to maintain optimal health. So let's say your blood sugar is good where it should be, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your weight, and you're like, you know what? I'm nailing this right now. I'm good. 12 hours on, 12 hours off is what's recommended to maintain kind of optimal levels that you have already achieved, right? 12 hours. So you're you're giving your body a break. Sure. When you sleep, your body's got lots of stuff that it wants to do. So digesting food is not the thing it wants to do. So Come give on. it a 12 hour break. However, and we're going to talk now adults. So certainly this would not be advice for children or teenagers mm-hmm. or necessarily someone who's looking to start a family. So they're trying to get pregnant. Right. But, um, generally speaking for adults, I'm always very careful when I'm giving it advice off the cuff, um, if you are going for something to change metabolically, okay. okay, so 
So when we talk about metabolism, we are not just talking about how quickly you lose weight. Some people mm-hmm. think like, oh, I, I either have good metabolism or I don't because I either lose weight when I want to or I can't. But when you talk about entire metabolic function, it actually has to do with, uh, it's multifactorial. So you're talking about the way that you use food, right? So use energy, use calories. Sure. Yeah. The way you store yeah. food, energy, calories, yeah. and the way you excrete it. So, so how you dispose of it, how you do away with it. That's the full metabolic picture. So it also has to do with not only how quickly you can put on weight or lose weight, but how your body is metabolizing fats, carbs, proteins, right? So when you're looking to alter any of those, if you're looking to alter your, uh, you're trying to be more insulin sensitive right. uh, because you're insulin resistant or, you know, which leads to, to diabetes. So you're trying to bring down your blood glucose or you're trying to bring down uh, your LDL cholesterol yeah. or you are weight. trying to lose weight. <laughs> right. It, so if you're trying to adjust anything metabolically, yeah. we know that typically for most people, you want to get shorter, smaller than that 12 hour eating window. Right. So the term is TRE. I'm not a huge fan of that because it has the word restricted in it. Time restricted eating. Okay. Um, yeah. So I personally refer to it as your eating window sounds a little more pleasant than using the word restricted. Um, But if your eating window is closer to eight to 10 hours, you're much more likely to be able to adjust the metabolic function just by trimming the window. Um, There are other types of certain fasting that people can do in regards to, well, I, I want to do a 24 or 48 right. hour water cleanse or right. a water fast or right. liquid only. Right. I would be very careful about those depending on where your levels are starting that you sh- certainly shouldn't do anything. Anything over 24 hours should not be done outside of the care of a licensed professional. Mm-hmm. I always found out I was the best uh, professional for my care, but no, that's, that's not correct. <laughs> I'm, sure you, I'm sure you are. And I, and I get that. Th- that's not correct. I mean, that's why I do have a primary care physician that I believe in. Sure. You know, sure. Um, but I do, you know, it's all about listening to your body too. Yes. And sometimes that takes practice. Yeah. And nutrition is really for, it, it fills in the gaps um, yeah. outside of your medical team, right? So right. nutritional therapy or any nutritional care does not replace your current medical team, right. but it fills in the gaps, right? right? And that's what I had learned even with my two kids having quite a few health problems was yeah. there was just... We hit a brick wall. There was quite a few gaps. We oh. weren't seeing the results we needed to see. So I knew there was something more to the picture. And so nu- nutritional therapy does a great job to fill in those gaps. Yeah. Right. Yep. Well, excellent. Is there anything more we need to talk about? Because I could continue <laughs> this, but I'm going to wrap it up. But I, it would be really important for the audience to know uh, how, you know, if they have a question, sure. I mean, we would want them to go to the guru, Valerie. Oh, well, um, that's kind. So go ahead and please, you know, that and about your book and how they could, you know, get your book. And that. Sure. So um, my website is holistichealthbyvalerie.com. Okay. Um, While I do have a Facebook and an Instagram, I do not use them (laughs) very often. So um, you won't really see me much on social media. Um, But sending me an email, Valerie at HolisticHealthByValerie.com. That's a good way to get in touch with me. Um, It's if you go to the website, the book is right on that front page. It's very easy to read, refuse and buy the book. Uh, from the website yeah. so you can get there. And yes, I'm always happy to answer questions. If it's a really in-depth question, I will probably let you know. Sorry about that. We need to see each other. Okay, Valerie, thank you so much. And uh, I appreciate it a lot. And uh, everybody have a blessed day and take advantage of uh, take putting this into your daily lifestyle. Thanks, Dennis. God bless. Okay. Thought it went good, Valerie. Well, you are really.